In physics, a vector can be resolved into two perpendicular components. This is done by joining the tail of a vector to the head of the vector using two perpendicular vectors, such that the angle between the two vectors forms a right angle. When resolving a vector into its perpendicular components, it is useful to keep in mind that the components should always be smaller than the original vector itself. So why do we resolve vectors? The two main reasons why we resolve vectors are to simplify the analysis of a more complex problem and also to help us understand a complex problem in physics. All vector quantity can be resolved into the perpendicular components. This includes kinematic variables such as displacement, velocity, and acceleration, which will be the focus of this video. And in another video, we'll walk through how to resolve dynamics vectors such as force and momentum. Let's go through some specific examples on how we can resolve vectors. Let's say the displacement of an object is 10 meters at 30 degrees to the east. We can draw two perpendicular components from the tail to the head of the vector, such that they form a right angle between them. Let's call this component Sx and this component Sy to differentiate between the two components. We'll need to use trigonometry to calculate the values of the two components. Sx is the adjacent side to the angle 30 degrees, while Sy is the opposite side. And of course, 10 meters is the hypotenuse of my right angle triangle. So I can say Xx, which is the adjacent side, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10 meters, is equal to cosine 30 degrees. So the horizontal component here is equal to 10 times by cosine 30 degrees, which gives a value of 8.66 meters to the east. The vertical component is the opposite side to the 30 degrees. So Sy divided by the hypotenuse is equal to sine 60 degrees. So Sy is equal to 10 sine 60 degrees, which is 5 meters to the north. Like displacement, Velocity is also a vector, which means it can also be resolved into two perpendicular components. So we'll first start with the tail of the vector, and we'll join it to the head of the vector via two perpendicular components, such that they form a right angle. In this example, this is my Vx, my horizontal component, and this is my Vy, my vertical component. Vx is again my adjacent side, so Vx is equal to 64 cosine, 45 degrees, which is 45 meters per second to the right. Vy is my vertical component, and that's my opposite side, so 64 sine 45 degrees. And this also gives me 45 meters per second down page. Now, not all vectors must be resolved into horizontal and vertical components. As long as the components are perpendicular to one another, then the resolution of the vector is correct. In this case, the acceleration vector is going down at 10 meters per second squared. So when we resolve this vector into the two perpendicular components, they are not horizontal nor vertical, yet they form a right angle between them. So if this angle here this is, let's say, 25 degrees, then we can call this a y and this component a x. It doesn't matter which one is labeled with, with which, as long as you differentiate between which component you're determining. Ax is the opposite side to the angle, so then this is equal to 10 sine 25 degrees, which is 4.23 meters per second squared. And Ay is the adjacent side to the angle, so this is equal to 10 cosine 25 degrees, which is equal to 9.06 meters per second squared. A car travels at 30 meters per second at a bearing of north 30 degrees east for 50 seconds. How far east has a car traveled? So before we go through this example, let's draw a diagram. So a car travels at 30 meters per second for 50 seconds, so that we can find the displacement, which is equal to the velocity times by the time, as there is no acceleration. This is 30 meters per second, times by 50 seconds, which gives you a value of 1,500 meters. So the displacement of the car is 1,500 meters at an angle of 
30 degrees to the north. To find out how far east and how far north the car has traveled, we can simply resolve this original displacement vector. So join the tail of the vector to the head via two perpendicular vectors. If the angle between the vector and the north point is 30 degrees, then this angle here will be 60 degrees, as they must add up to 90 degrees. For part A, how far east the car has traveled, we'll be finding the adjacent vector to the angle. So the displacement here is equal to 1,500 meters cosine 60 degrees, which is equal to 750 meters to the east. What about how far north? Well, in this case, the vertical vector that is opposite to the angle 60 degrees represents the displacement in the north direction. So in this case, the displacement in the north direction is equal to 1,500 multiplied by sine 60 degrees, which is equal to 1,300 meters to the north. A mass initially at rest slides on the frictionless surface inclined at an angle of 15 degrees relative to the horizontal under the influence of gravity. Calculate the speed of the mass after 5 seconds. So we have an incline at an angle of roughly 15 degrees to the horizontal, which is the ground. So let's say this is the mass. Let's call this m. m accelerates downward at 9.8 meters per second squared due to the influence of gravity. Now, of course, due to the incline and gravity, the mass will start to move this way, down the incline. Let's call this velocity v. To find out the effect of gravity on the motion of the mass, we must resolve the acceleration vector of gravity. This is because the direction of the vector is going downward, and it is not in the same direction as the motion that the mass will undergo, which is down the incline. To resolve this vertical vector of acceleration, we will join the tail of the vector to the head of the vector via two perpendicular vectors. Now, if I draw a parallel line to the horizontal, we know that this angle here is also 15 degrees because alternate angles on parallel lines are equal. The angle between the horizontal dash line and the acceleration vector going downward is 90 degrees, which means this angle here between the incline and the acceleration vector will be 90 minus 15 degrees, which is 75 degrees. If we draw a surface, and this is the mass, the inclined surface and this component of the acceleration will be parallel. And we already determined that this angle here is 75 degrees, which means this angle here is also 75 degrees, as these two lines are parallel. Now that I've found this angle of this right angle triangle, I can find the components of gravity. So this component, let's call this AX, AX is equal to 9.8 cosine 75 degrees because this vector is adjacent to the angle of 75 degrees. This gives me a new acceleration of 2.54 meters per second squared. This is the acceleration component that acts on the mass going down the incline, which means the mass will start to move down the incline at 2.54 meters per second squared instead of 9.8 meters per second squared. This acceleration is useful in finding the speed of the mass after five seconds, because now I can use the kinematic equation v equals to u plus at to find the velocity after five seconds. So u here is zero because the mass is initially at rest. The acceleration is 2.54 times by five seconds. This gives me a velocity of 12.7 meters per second going down the incline and since the question is asking for speed only we can leave the answer as 12.7 meters per second without the direction. A person runs in the east direction at 3 meters per second for 40 seconds. So let's say this is going to the east. 3 meters per second for 40 seconds. The displacement here will be the velocity times by the time which gives you a 120 meters. So this displacement vector here is 120 meters. Then in the north direction, for at 4 meters per second for 25 seconds. The displacement here will be 4 meters per second times by 25 seconds, which gives us 100 meters north. So this vector here is 100 meters. While we can resolve a vector 
into its perpendicular components. We can also add or combine two perpendicular components to form what we call a resultant vector. To form a resultant vector, we simply join the tail of one of the components to the head of the other component, such that we can form a right angle triangle, where the resultant vector is the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. Let's call this hypotenuse vector S. So the resultant displacement vector can be calculated by using Pythagoras theorem. So S squared is equal to 120 squared plus 100 squared or square root. So the resultant displacement has a magnitude of 156 meters. Remember that displacement is a vector, so we need to find the angle to describe the direction. Let's call this theta. The value of theta can be calculated by using trigonometry. So we can say tangent theta is equal to the opposite side, so 100 meters, divided by the adjacent side, which is 120 meters. So theta is equal to tangent inverse of 100 divided by 120, which gives a value of 39.8 degrees. As a convention, we can describe the direction by providing a bearing. And the bearing is usually given from the north direction. So if theta here is 39.8 degrees, we can find the angle alpha here by subtracting it from 90 degrees. So alpha is equal to 90 degrees minus 39.8 degrees, which is 50.2 degrees. That means my final answer for displacement will be 156 meters at an angle of north 50.2 degrees east. A rocket initially traveling horizontally to the right at 40 meters per second applies a downward thrust which results in an upward acceleration at 5 meters per second squared. Calculate the velocity of the rocket after 6 seconds. So the rocket has a velocity vector of 40 meters per second to the right and also an acceleration vector of 5 meters per second squared upwards. This example will demonstrate why analyzing the problem using components of vectors or just vectors in general will make it easier to understand. So here, because the 5 minutes per second squared is perpendicular to the 40 minutes per second, this acceleration does not affect the horizontal velocity vector. In fact, what it does is that it will affect the velocity vector in the same direction, which is upwards. But since the rocket is traveling horizontally in the beginning, it doesn't have any vertical components of velocity. So its initial vertical velocity is actually zero. So let's call that ui, the initial vertical component of velocity. This is equal to zero meters per second. We can use the kinematic equation v equals u plus at to calculate what the final velocity will be after six seconds in the vertical component. So let's call that vy. Vy is equal to Uy plus Ayt. So Vy is equal to zero. Ay is the acceleration in the vertical direction. So that's five meters per second squared times by six seconds. And this gives me a velocity of 30 meters per second upwards. So now we know after six seconds, the vertical component of velocity will be going upwards at 30 meters per second. And this is purely due to the acceleration that's being applied. After six seconds, the horizontal velocity vector does not change because the acceleration only affects the vertical velocity vector. So now we have a scenario where we have two perpendicular velocity components. So to find the velocity, the true velocity of the rocket, we need to find the resultant vector by combining or adding these two components. So we'll join the tail of one vector to the head of the other vector, such that the resultant vector is the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. Let's call this velocity v. So v is equal to 40 squared plus 30 squared or square root. And this gives me a magnitude of 50 meters per second. Again, we need to describe the direction of the velocity by finding this angle theta. Tangent theta is equal to 30 divided by 40. So theta is equal to 37 degrees. That means my velocity after six seconds is 50 meters per second at 37 degrees above the horizontal or above the ground.
This concludes the introductory video to resolving vectors in physics.